Economic Community of West African States had given Mali until January 1st to release the 46 Ivorian soldiers accused by Bamako of being mercenaries. However, the date has now passed and the 46 soldiers who were sentenced to 20 years in prison have not been released. But ECOWAS does not intend to punish Mali, seeing as relations between Mali and Côte d'Ivoire have improved significantly with the memorandum recently signed by the two governments. ECOWAS considers it is not the time to create new tensions. All eyes are now on Kuluba, the seat of the presidential palace in Bamako, where a possible presidential pardon could be decided. In order not to slow down the process that could lead to a presidential pardon, the defense lawyers filed an act of non-appeal at the registry to certify that they renounce all means of appeal. Togo, the mediating country in this case, is multiplying initiatives for a quick and happy outcome. Hundreds of Senegalese civilians demonstrated in Dakar on Saturday by banging pots and pans during President Macky Sall's end-of-year speech. Encouraged by opposition, both the demonstration and Friday's protest were to demand legal action after a report of the management of anti-COVID funds was found to contain numerous irregularities. The opposition has repeatedly denounced the authorities' theft after an audit by the Court of Auditors pointed shortcomings, overbilling and lack of evidence of expenditure. Civil society is demanding the resignation of all those implicated and the reimbursement of the alleged misappropriations. The slogan, No to a Third Term, appeared on several placards because of the doubt that persists on the decision of President Macky Sall to run again in 2024. The government has defended itself by stressing that the reported shortcomings concern less than 1% of the total amount of the fund and has promised to follow the recommendations of the Court of Auditors. Mourners on Monday queued to see Pelis Coffin in the Urbano Cadeira Stadium at the home of the Brazilian football legend longtime club Santos. The three time World Cup champions Coffin left Albert Etienne Hospital in Sao Paulo early on Monday and was taken to the stadium where he played some of the best matches of his career for the Santos Soccer Club. The club said in a statement that the public would be able to pay their last respects at the stadium in the coastal city outside Sao Paulo. Visiting hours were expected to start at 10 a.m. local time and it's expected to close same time on Tuesday where a private burial ceremony will be held. Pele died on Thursday, December 29 at age 82 after a long battle with cancer. According to report, Pele had colon tumor removed in September 2021. Neither his family nor the hospital have said whether it had spread to other organs. Dancers and musicians take part in a carnival in Lagos, Nigeria called Fanti Okareta Carnival. The event is a yearly tradition usually held on the first day of the year and was inspired by former slaves who returned from Brazil to Lagos in the 19th century. Every January 1st, we like to be here to celebrate the Saleko Warrior. That's Fancy Carnival. Every January 1st, we used to be here to celebrate Cash Rush, Cash Rush, Crush, every one of us to mingle with so many people. So every January 1st is all about us there. Okulolori Omi. The carnival portrays an eclectic mixture of Nigerian, Brazilian, and Cuban heritage of the city. The Brazilian quarters of this area, they call it Coco Aguda. It's mainly descendants of people from Brazil and the Cubans. And you, if you should know the tradition of Brazil, they have a culture they call uh, the Brazilian carnival. So I think they take the cue from the Brazilian carnival, so it, they replicate it here. But it's a long time tradition. We grow up to meet it. That's the way they do it. The carnival is one of the most prominent in West Africa and it is usually held during the Lagos Black Heritage Festival, a colorful folk festival which holds annually in Lagos. Ugandan police have arrested Abimu Zinguzi, also known as Abitex, one of the organizers behind the New Year concert that ended in the death by trampling of 10 people, seven of which were children. 
Police said the organizer did not follow a guideline that requires children to be accompanied at such gatherings by an adult. With an estimated 500 people present at the concert, the crash occurred as they all rushed to the Freedom City Mall's parking lot to watch a fireworks display as the clock struck midnight. Some people died on the spot from suffocation while others died later in local clinics. Local media report that the event organizers had closed the other three exits to prevent people who didn't have tickets from entering the venue. Police have described the incident as rash acts and negligence that led to the tragedy and are looking for the people involved in organizing the event. Vice President Jessica Alupo has vowed that the government will pay $1,350 to each victim's family to help with burial costs.